triangle mid segment theorem, you need to know mid segment triangle properties concept. The theorem states if a segment joins the midpoints of two sides of the triangle, then the segment is parallel to the third side in half its length. This can be observed in this diagram. Right? A, B has its midpoint at D. A, C has its midpoint at E. If we join D, E, then D, E is parallel to B, C, and D, E is half B, C. Right? But how many mid segments have a triangle? There are three mid segments. Now, when a mid segment triangle D E F of triangle A B C is drawn, how many triangles do you see in the diagram? We have triangle number one, two, three, four and the outside one, A, B, C, right? So in essence, they are five. Okay, what is the relationship between the small scalene triangles inside the larger triangle? The larger triangle is A, B, C. So one, the relationship of the four triangles. If we try to compare two triangles, E, C, F, and E, F, D, Right, you find that D F is equals to E C, right? D E is equals to F C and E F is common. So the triangles are congruent by side, side, side. So in essence, this is the relationship between the four of them. They are congruent. So four small, Scalene triangles inside the larger triangle are congruent by side, side, side. How many parograms do you see in the diagram? Right, you should notice that there are six. Each mid segment generates two parallelograms. Let us just look at one segment, EF. Right, EF as a mid segment, but it's equal to AD, it's equal to DB. That's the half AB um, theorem, isn't it? So the AB and DB, that's where the two paragraphs are going to come from. Therefore, if we now consider FEAD, that is the first paragraph. Right, then we consider F E D B, the second one. So for each mid segment, we generate two paragraphs. Then since there are three, three times two, you get the six. Now, how many trapezium, including special cases, do you see in the diagram? There are nine of them. Of the nine of them, the special cases are the six um, paragraphs that we have seen already because all paragraphs are trapezium, right? The other three are simply each mid segment generate one, right? That is uh, E, F is parallel to A, B, and it gives us the trapezium F, E, a, B, right? So you can do for the other segment, the other one, and you get there will be three plus the special one, the paragraphs, they become nine. Now, let us look at this example where you are given a triangle STU is the mid segment triangle of PQR, right? We want to show that triangle STU is similar to triangle PQR, right? So given the mid-segment triangle STU required to prove the two triangles are similar from the mid-segment 
triangle SDU, we can think of parallel segment corresponding angles equal, alternate interior angles equal, core interior angles supplementary, similar triangle, congruent triangle, parallelogram, opposite angles equals from the parallelogram, equal side. All these and others from the diagram are useful when dealing with the mid-segment theorem and or mid-segment triangle. Because once you don't think in line of this, then at times it's not easy to then show that the mid-segment triangle is similar to um, P, Q, R. Now, we are going to use two methods. Method number one, we know that each segment generates two parallelograms, right? So using the mid-segment T, U, for the two parallelograms to show that S, triangle S, T, U is similar to triangle P, Q, R, right? How am I going to start? Remember, we are talking about similarity here, then we need to choose from the three tests of uh, similar triangles. That is the side, side, side ratio or proportion and side angle, side and the angle, angle. But the fact that in this case, I'm using the parallelogram, right? I'm going to simply, because I'm not given the measurements as they say for me, to maybe quickly arrive at that, but I'm not saying it's not possible. But the quickest is just to concentrate on angles. We are going to show that uh, the two triangles are similar using the angle angle test, right? So here is the um, parallelogram I'm going to use generated by um, the mid segment TU that I have chosen, but it could have chosen any, it also works, right? But I'm simply trying to tell you how you are supposed to, it's parallelogram because this side correspond to that, they are equal, isn't it? These sides correspond to they are equal. Right, they, they are equal. So it is a program, equal and parallel, right? It's a program we have seen that already. So in essence, I'm simply saying this angle, right? Angle in Q is equals to angle S U T. S U T, this one. Why? Because um, they are opposite angles of the parallelogram S U T Q. And don't forget to focus on the triangles that we wanted to show that they are similar, right? It's triangle S T U and P Q R, right? Once I've shown that, then I need another angle. And that angle should be angle in what? In P. That means when I'm saying angle in P, right, is equal to angle in STU. STU, this one. That means the parallelogram that I'm, I'm considering now is this one. Still working with the TU because T you generate two parallelogram. The other one we had seen that already, right? That is what it means. That's the parallelogram we are working with. And we had already seen that this angle is equal to this one from the first parallelogram generated by TU, right? So as you can see now, in the triangle STU, we have two angles, angle in T 
and the other one at U, which corresponding to one at um, P and the other one at Q. And the P and the Q are for the bigger triangle. So now we have corresponding, two corresponding angles equal, right? So from there, we can actually conclude now that um, triangle STU is similar to triangle PQR. Let me just put them there so that you can actually make reference like that. Then the other one, this one, and this one. And remember, this is not the only angle that you could have used. No, but I'm simply saying, you know exactly what you want to do and where you want to arrive. So with that, the proof is complete. Now, I'm going to use the second method, right? The second method is for inside triangles, we know that they are congruent. And we know that congruent triangles are similar, right? So using the mid segment ST parallel to PR. This is the ST that I'm going to use parallel um, to PR. Right? To show that the triangle STU is similar to triangle PQR, the bigger one. I'm going to use that. Now, all what it means is the fact that already we know these two are parallel. There's that theorem that when a line is parallel one side of the triangle and cuts the other two sides, right? The triangle formed, which is this one. Let me show you. This triangle formed, this one, right, is similar to the original one, that is P, Q, R. This is all what I've written here, right? That theorem, ST parallel to P, R, and intersect the other two sides of triangle P, Q, R. The triangles formed are similar, right? Then the next thing would be, once the fact that I've already established that these two are similar, then where I want to arrive at, I want to arrive at STU, not triangle QST. Then what I know from the properties of the mid-segment triangle is all the triangles are equal by side, side, side. That is, they are congruent. Therefore, I have to then say triangle QST, which is this one, right, is equal to triangle S. They are the same. They are congruent. Inside triangles, congruent, equal property. That is what I have used. So once I have done that, then that means where there's triangle KST, I can put triangle STU. With that, then I rush them to conclude that triangle STU is similar to triangle PQR by substituting two into one, right? So we are through with the demonstration. All what was important here is you should know the properties of the mid-segment triangle. 